Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you got a chance to take these two problems for a spin. There's an answer to 57 in the back of the text. And if for part C, it turns out to be different than uh, what we get. So if you can believe it, I left my monster answer key back at school. And they're not letting anybody in for a while. So if you get something different, uh, we'll certainly discuss it and let me know. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at number 57 here. It says, consider this reaction you all can read. It says to use the values in appendix 4 to calculate the delta G for the reaction. So all I did on this guy is I used this equation. Hang on, let me set this down flat so I can actually write on this. Where we know that the sum of the total of the delta G's of all the products. And if we subtract from that the sum of all the reactants. So for doing it exactly that way, I got for delta G using all the values in this guy, not that guy, this guy, right? You've all seen this before. Okay, got a value for delta G of positive 53 kilojoules and a value of delta S of uh, 0.138 kilojoules. Be careful because all of these values for delta S are listed in joules. I didn't mean to cross that out. Joules per Kelvin mole. So you want to put those into kilojoules by dividing by a thousand. Okay, so that's where all these come from. I'll give you an example here for Fe203. Here's our buddy, Fe203. And he has got a value of S of 90 joules. So putting that into kilojoules, 0.09. Okay, so I did that for all of these. Now I double checked these over and over again. They look correct. I got a value of delta S of 0.138. If you got something different, let's talk about it. Uh, we'll use those in a little bit. So for part B, it says is the reaction spontaneous delta G has got to be negative. Well, we got a value of 0.53. It is not spontaneous. But the problem tells us we're looking at the problem that tells us the value of delta H of 100 kilojoules. Remember that little dot, this guy, is for significant figures. It tells us that there's three significant figures. I'm not going to worry about that. But we know that the value for delta H is 100 kilojoules. So flipping this equation around to find the temperature at which or above delta G will be uh, less than or equal to zero. I'm using this version of the equation. T is equal to delta H over delta S. Plugged in everything, and I got a value uh, of 724.6 kelvins. Now, that sounds valid, but if you look in the answer key at the back of the text, it says, so, so let me do this. Right here, it says that the value it gets for the temperature is uh, anything greater than 630 kelvins. Uh, that's this guy right here. Okay? And I got 724.6. If you got something different, like I said, let's talk about it. I don't know why they're different, but there has been errors in this textbook's answer key before. Sometimes they're just wrong. All right, so let's not worry about it. If you got 724.6, you're awesome. If you got 630, I don't like you anymore, and I want you to tell me how you got it, okay? Okay, let's take a look at number 58. And what I did is, since the problem doesn't say anything about values for delta H, I went in and found them for you. Uh, I just looked online. They're not in this table. So if you look for POCl3, phosphorus uh, chlorate, or triphosphorus chloride, you won't find them. So I just looked them up online, and these were the values that I got, and I gave them to you. And hopefully that made things a little easier. 
So here are the values of delta G that the problem gave us. Plug them right into the equation. I got a value of delta G of 464 joules. It's a positive number, so the reaction is not spontaneous. And here are the value of delta S, 179 joules, 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 ladies and gentlemen, not kilojoules, per Kelvin mole. And the values of delta H and delta S that we got from right here. So PCL3, that's a product. POCL3, that's a reactant. So it's products minus reactants. There's our PCL3. We know the delta G of anything elemental is always zero. And if you don't believe me, where's our oxygen? Delta G for any elemental is always zero. Okay, so that's how I got that. All right. So I got a delta G of 464. I got a delta H of positive 480.24. There's really no reason to express it to that many decimal places. If nothing else does, but I'm being a little over thorough. And we're converting our value of delta S to kilojoules. And remember that the units cancel. Kilojoules cancels kilojoules, moles cancels moles. Our answer is in kelvins, and I got 2,682.9. Again, I left my monster answer key at the school, so uh, you might have something different. If so, let's talk about it, and I will post this answer key for you on our next session. All right. See you then. Bye.